Assassin's Cow is a top tier exotic helmet for hunters in Destiny 2 and it pairs really well with all subclasses. Today I'm going to show you how to get it plus put together an Arc 3.0 build with Assassin's Cow. So Arc 3.0 has some great melee focused abilities and this paired up with swashbuckler weapons and rat king you're going to be that invisible and electrifying assassin who can then heal on demand in tricky situations. Well, if you're new around here or find this useful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below for all the latest Destiny 2 content and turn on notifications by hitting that bell. And roughly 98% of the viewers who watch this week in video games aren't subscribed. So subscribe today and never miss an update. Well, let's dive right into that important information first of how to get Assassin's Cowl in Destiny 2. Well, to get this exotic helmet for the Hunter, you have to complete the Shadow Keep campaign and then go and visit Ikora Ray in the tower. You're going to get a standard 48 stat roll, which isn't great, but once you've got it in your loot pool, you're then going to be able to get other versions of Assassin's Cowl when you get exotic engrams. Assassin's Cowl is great with most subclasses, although with Arc 3.0 it is pretty special. So without further delay, let's dive into this build. First of all, we've got the Arc 3.0 setup. So for my super, I'm using Gathering Storm. For my class ability, I'm using Gambler's Dodge. My melee, I'm using Combination Blow, and for my grenade, I'm using a Pulse Grenade. For my aspects, I'm using Lethal Current, so after dodging, your next melee attack has an increased lunge range, jolts the target and creates a damaging aftershock, and damaging any jolted target with a melee attack also blinds them. Then I'm using Flow State, so defeating a jolted target makes you amplified, and while you're amplified, your dodge recharges more quickly, you're more resilient while dodging, and your reload speed is greatly increased. Next up, looking at the fragments, so first of all, Spark of Irons, defeating a jolted target creates an Ionic Trace. Spark of Recharge, while critically wounded, your melee and grenade energy regenerate more quickly. Spark of Resistance, so when surrounded by enemies, the player has increased damage resistance. And Spark of Magnitude, your lingering arc grenades, so pulse grenades in this case, have an increased duration. Then for the exotic armour, that is Assassin's Cowl. So it's an exotic hunter helmet with the perk Vanishing Execution. So Vanishing Execution means powered melee final blows grant invisibility and restore a portion of health and shields. Finishes and final blows against more powerful targets increase the duration of the invisibility and the amount of health and the shields restored. Next up, looking at the weapons. So in the kinetic slot, I'm using Rat King. This one is an exotic kinetic sidearm that comes with some excellent perks. First of all, Rat Pack, so this fully automatic weapon becomes stronger when nearby allies also have it equipped. Stacks up to six times. And then we've got Vermin, so reloading it immediately after a kill grants a brief period of invisibility. And you can get Rat King from the Monument to Lost Lights in the exotic kiosk in the tower. In the energy slot, I'm using Shadow Price. This one is a legendary energy auto rifle with a precision frame, meaning the weapon's recoil pattern is much more predictably vertical. So I've got a version with Swashbuckler, it's going to work really, really well with the build. So the weapon gains increased damage from melee kills and kills with the weapon. It's also good because it's an arc weapon and this season can deal with anti-barrier champions. If you don't have Shadow Price, then any other energy weapon with Swashbuckler would be really good. So bonus points for it being able to take on champions. So this season that means scout rifles, pulse rifles, bows or snipers. So in the power slot, I'm using Plank Stride, a really, really good machine gun, this one. So it's an arc machine gun in the power slot. Great for the build. Also, I've got one with Swashbuckler. So as I mentioned before, that works really, really well with this melee focus build. So finally, having a look at the mods, I'm using Melee Wellmaker. So powered melee combatant final blows spawn elemental wells that match your subclass energy type. I'm using Bountiful Wells, so elemental well mods that cause you to spawn elemental wells now stack. Spawning additional wells for each additional copy of the mod you have equipped. I'm using Font of Might, so picking up an elemental well that matches your subclass energy type grants you a temporary bonus to weapon damage of the same element type. I'm using Anti Barrier Auto Rifle Overload Machine Guns and also Resilience Mods too, so try to get your stats up to 100 for that 40% damage reduction. Well, next up, let's have a look at the gameplay. So, this build is all about going in and out of invisibility striking opponents with your melee and then regenerating health on demand. Assassin's Cowl is really, really good with other subclasses, but Ark has great supporting aspects and fragments when it comes to melee abilities, so we're going to build around that. First of all, we've got the invisibility, so Vanishing Execution is the perk on Assassin's Cowl. It's going to help us go invisible when we get powered melee final blows. 
We can charge up our melee abilities nice and quickly through our class ability Gandalf's Dodge, and that means dodging near enemies fully restores our melee. There's a good loop involving both aspects too with Lethal Current and Flow State, so we can melee with Lethal Current and that jolts the target. Then through Flow State, defeating a jolted target helps your class ability recharge faster, so we can melee, dodge, melee, dodge, and get into that deadly flow. Isn't the only way that we can go invisible either, I'm also using Rat King, which has the perk Vermin, where reloading immediately after a kill grants a brief period of invisibility. So this build is great for Nightfalls and other endgame content, as we can regenerate our health on a powered melee kill through Assassin's Cow. Now it restores health and also shields, and it's going to help you get out of tight situations. You also want to try and get as close as you can to 100 resilience through mods, and that will add a 40% damage resistance against incoming damage. So Spark of Recharge, also really good, so while you are critically wounded, your melee and grenades recharge faster. We're also going to be powering up our damage output through Elemental Wells and Font of Might. So Melee Wellmaker works well with the build, so every time we defeat enemies with a powered melee final blow, we're going to generate Elemental Wells, so you can pick them up and Font of Might adds 20% to our damage output. Well, another bonus here for the build of Swashbuckler Weapons. Swashbuckler says the weapon gains increased damage from melee kills and kills with a weapon. So given we're going to be using our melee a lot, boosting the melee damage output isn't going to hurt, and it all works great overall with this build. Well, let me know in the comments what you think of the build, and let me know if you've got any improvements. And that is it for this guide for how to get Assassin's Cowl in Destiny 2. And as always, thank you so much for watching or listening. For more Destiny 2 content like this, hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. Or you can check me out on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. Well, if you enjoyed this video, found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the other videos on the channel. Well, thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Should be. We've wiped your engineering deck clean. Good work, guys. Okay, I've got Zavala mobilizing other teams to secure the ship behind you. There's gotta be some way I can pawn off this paperwork. Maybe Hawthorne will do me a solid. Hmm.